بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هب تف الله continue on in our series about Salafiyah and Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah that we are benefiting from the book uh, one of the books of Sheikh Muhammad Al Bazmul Hafid Allah Taala and he mentioned about Usul Salafiyah. So I think we'll mention this, uh, this as briefly as possible and gain some of the benefits because many people, they claim Salafiyya. They claim to be in the Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, but they don't really know what it means. This is unfortunate. And many people attack Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, Da'wah to, Salafi, Da'wah to Salafiyya, and they don't even know what they're attacking. They're fearful of something they have no knowledge about. The Shaykh mentions Usul Salafiyya, the foundation of Salafiyya. What are we talking about? Tukum Salafiyya ala thalatha usul wahiyya. Salafiyya is built on three foundations. So the Shaykh is giving some general foundations for us to understand Salafiyya. Now within his principles that he's mentioning, you'll find other principles that are not mentioned, but they're inside these principles. He says, Usul al-Awwal, Ikhlas ibadati lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the first foundation is sincerity in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asul al-thani, luzum al-jama'a wa sam'i wa ta'a. The second foundation is to adhere to the main body of Muslims, the jama'a, what, and what the sahaba were upon. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, and hearing and obey the Muslim leader. Asami wa ta'a. So he said, so far we mentioned two asuls, two asuls. The first one is that you're sincere in your worship of Allah, so that covers all aspects of Tawheed. And secondly, especially Tawheed al-Ibadah. And the second thing he said, lazum al jamaa That means sticking with the main body of Muslims and being upon what the Salaf of this Ummah were upon. Because the asal of the jamaa is the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. And hearing and obeying the Muslim ruler. If you're under the authority of the Muslim ruler, then listening and obeying, even if the Muslim ruler is sinful, you should obey them in righteousness. The Prophet ﷺ said, Prophet ﷺ said, hearing and obey the leader in what is good and, and what you like and what you don't like as long as they don't command you to do evil, and if they command you to do evil, then there's no hearing and there's no obeying. Meaning that in that issue of sinfulness, there's no hearing and obeying. It does not mean that it negates all the authority of the leader. So that's very important. And that's where Ahl Sunnah, where we differ with Ahl Takfir, with Ahl uh, 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 the, 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 the Khawarij, and other groups that are extreme because they negate the uh, authority of the leader. Whereas we say, no, we don't obey him in that sin. If he asks us to commit to do riba, we don't obey him in that. If he asks us to do this, we don't, we don't uh, uh, obey in that, but we still listen and obey the, his general authority. The third asal or foundation, al-hadr min bid'a wa mubtadi'in. So also one of the foundations of Ahl Sunnah, which distinguishes them from other groups, and you really find this today, is that Ahl Sunnah, they warn against uh, mistakes. They warn against bid'ah because bid'ah changes the religion from what it is in its pristine form. And they warn against the mubtadi'een, those people who innovate in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's a job that Allah has entrusted his servants to keep the religion and to keep firm upon the sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْخَرًا فَلِيُغَيْرُ بِيَدُ Whoever uh, changes, sees a sin, sin, then change it with his hand until the rest of the hadith that we already mentioned. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man amrina Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. Letting us know bid'ah is not accepted. And it is the job of Ahl Sunnah to reject bid'ah and reject the mubtadi'een. Be a source of guidance for them. Call them to the Sunnah but also refute those mistakes and refute the mutadi'in. <coughs> so those are the thalath usul of Salafiyyah that he mentions. And then he mentions some of the evidence for this, because he can't just say these things without evidence. He says, 
عن عبادة بن سارية رضي الله تعالى عنه قال وعذنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما بعد صلاة الغداء موعدة بليغة ذرفت منها العيون ووجلت منها القلوب فقال الرجل إن هذه موعدة مودع فماذا تعهدوا إلينا يا رسول الله قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أوسيكم بتقوى الله وسمع وطاع وإن عبد الهبشيا فإنه من يعيش منكم بعد من يعيش منكم يرى اختلافا كثيرا وإياكم محتثر الأمور فإنها ضلالة فمن أدرك ذلك منكم فعليه بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المحديين عدو عليها بين واجد إن الحديث فين الحديث of Irbad uh, ibn Sariya. So the Shaykh mentioned this as the Dalil for these uh, foundations. And the Prophet ﷺ was giving a, uh, a beautiful, was preaching to a Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, a beautiful preaching, and it, it caused the hearts to tremble, and they, they, it caused them to cry. You know, it was so powerful. And then a man, he stood up and he said, uh, you know, this is a beautiful preaching and, and, and as if it's a farewell, Ya Rasulullah. So what do you, what do you advise us with? <coughs> and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, <coughs> he said, Usikum bi Allah. I advise you to fear Allah and hear and obey the leader, even if it was an Ethiopian slave. <coughs> So whoever lives after you will see many differences. SubhanAllah, this is, this is what we witness. And then he said, so beware of newly invented matters, for, for verily they are misguidance. And whoever uh, meets this, and this happens to them, then it is upon them my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat, meaning the sunnah of Abu Bakr or uh, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anna majma'een and cling to it with your molar teeth. That's the importance of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. And there's so many benefits from that hadith. One day we will actually go through that hadith. But we're just going to give you the text because of our time is short. Then he mentioned another hadith on Sahl ibn Abi Saleh, on Abihi, on Abi Hurayrata, radiallahu ta'ala anna anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal anna Allah yarda lakum thalafa وَيَسْخُطُوا لَكُمْ ثَلَاثَةً يَرْضَ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْءٍ وَأَنْ تَعْتَسِمُوا بِهَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَأَنْ تُنَاسِحُوا مَنْ وَلَاهُ وَاللَّهُ أَمْرَكُمْ وَيَسْخَطُوا لَكُمْ قِيلُ وَقَالْ وَإِدَاعَةَ الْمَالِ وَكَثْرَةُ السُوَالِ This hadith is beautiful. He mentions this and then he mentions one other hadith. This is in this hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah is pleased with you three things. And He is displeased with you for three things. He is pleased with you and that you worship Allah alone and don't commit shirk with Him. And He is, uh, and also to adhere to the rope of Allah altogether, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah. And the third thing, and to advise those people who are in authority over you. And He dislikes uh, three things from you. He dislikes il waqal, meaning that you continue, you speak about passing rumors, you pass this, speaking about this one, speaking about this one, passing gossip, those kind of things. al-mal, and wasting your wealth. Wa kathratu suwal, and asking too many questions that are unnecessary, that have no benefit. And then the Shaykh mentioned one last hadith, and we'll take that the next time. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And to bless the Shaykh and bless all the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.